Hello there, everybody. It's your favorite boy on the YouTube platform. My name is Here With His Head, and welcome back to episode four of Kenji, Rise of the Dwarf. We last left off having really began construction on the Dwarf Kingdom capital of Carrick Bodor. And things have really begun to pick up. We're producing resources, the walls are up, and we're selling off excessive copper for sidecats to spend on research and, you know, research materials. The prison is developing nicely, which is going to be mighty useful later on for rapid recruitment of our short little lads. Now, early on, we got our hands on wall upgrades because, let's face it, those makeshift walls look like shite. And they're about as good a defense as, you know, a chicken strip. So with this new upgrade, our walls will be much more functional and are able to be scaled, which means, you know, we can start building turrets and raid defenses and all that good stuff. So after what is a second eternity of putting up a single segment of walls and realigning them to not look like utter trash, which they still kind of do. And, you know, like I said in the last episode, it's a very taxing task, you know, very, very, very menial task uh, has since put me in therapy. So... Shortly thereafter, I discovered that just outside our lovely abode is a pile of eviscerated bandit corpses and a bleeding out hyena. And uh, a thought occurred. What do all good kings have? A goddamn massive attack dog that's big enough to ride into battle, naturally. So we tossed that furry beast and some of the nameless fodder into cages, like the mongrels that they are, and we heal them up before we move back to the walls. I decide we need to adjust the shape a little bit because, frankly, what we've got is not working. Not working for me. It's not good. Which means more walls and more work placing them. Lovely. Fast forward two in-game days later and the walls are all placed, construction has really begun, and the lengthy task of dismantling the old walls has also started. It was around this time that some people from the Traders Guild showed up and I had to greet them as all UC affiliates should be greeted. With cold steel. And naturally, they used me as a tiny fleshlight. So, for once, we are going to save scum on that one. It was a dumb idea. I shouldn't have tried to jump those guards, and I don't want to hear about it in the comment section. Okay, not a move. Not gonna hear it. No, it's good. I got two small babies in my house who scream well enough right now. I don't need it. So, we reload, and I move into the prison, having briefly forgot about my hound in there. Sure enough, the boy is awake and ready to be recruited as my first dwarven warhound, which is what I named him. Once he is out and about, we move on to the walls. Again, I'm pretty much over it at this point. Which is why when an army of dust bandits arrived, I was almost overjoyed to see them. I mean, not overjoyed enough to fight them, obviously, but, you know, we learned that lesson today already. Uh, but uh, it's fine to be cowards, so long as you're going to cement that big crayon energy later, you know. Totally fine. It's good. It's fine. We spend the next day or so building walls, and I send my boys off on a supply run to the hub, sell off some of the copper we have before strolling back to the base and starting some new research. Now, it's when I get back to the base that uh, the mood really sets in, and uh, I decided I'm going to make this place not look like a grease fire anymore, so I settle on the more tile set aesthetic and jump right into it. Uh, it's got a pretty solid production system here. You know, we've got uh, the stone and, and the iron and the, the copper and all that stuff. So, so what if we basically get bodied every time we, uh, every time we fight? But uh, you know, let's build buildings instead, bolster our numbers. That's, I'm truly, I'm truly a professional. It's fine. I actually go as far as dismantling most of the buildings we already have, so I can commit to the style choice as well. So, it all really seemed like a pretty good idea. And after a ton of fiddling, we got the blueprints laid out, and I designed what was a really dank inner keep to sit on the top of the mountain, kind of act as the castle, so to speak, for Giorgio, you know? Uh, lastly, I, was, I really had a, a Helm's Deep vibe when I was putting this whole thing together. So, uh, you know, fast forward sometime later, all the buildings are almost done. The inner keep is starting to take shape, and I realized something, something that is going to really annoy you guys watching, but don't worry, as I have the next four episodes recorded, and I promise, I promise... It is the right move. Now, what is it you ask? Well, um, I I decided that I actually kind of hate this location. I'm going to tear this entire fucking thing down and try again. But do not worry about having three more episodes of me looking for a new place to start a base because uh, I actually just moved it to the other side of the mountain, you know, where there's more build potential. So I started to delete all of my old slash new buildings and dismantle the walls that took years off my life in beginning planning a layout for the new Carrick Bodor, including 
all of the new walls. So first things first, we established the front gate. Um, I think the walkway leading up to the side would provide a narrow and defendable path, you know, leading right into the city there. So that's what we settle on. And I play a few designs out, kind of kind of test the waters a bit. And afterwards, we get a basic stone mine set up. Uh, tearing down all my old stuff, place down the significant, you know, reduced number of walls because we had too many before. And as I've stated a hundred times now, they were literally taking years off my life. Jump forward a bit more and we have outlines and all this really good stuff starting to take shape in the new city. Um, I spent a good amount of time just playing with concepts and potential building placements. I really want to keep a good number of buildings in the side of the mountain, you know, have that whole dwarven aesthetic. And with that also comes the territory of me trying to figure out what I'm going to do with all of these slopes. You know, I also entertain the idea of making a noble district on the top of the mountain just outside the keep. Similar to like a high town leading into the inner keep or the castle. But I kind of scrapped that idea because I want Giorgio to have some land as well as his castle. And that means the biggest house with the grandest path. So the noble idea kind of got scrapped after that. Um, anyway, as I'm putting everything together, I realize these jagged, nasty looking region uh, at the bottom of the mountain there is basically unusable for placement. And I'm going to, just this one time, hop into Shift F12 into the build menu there, and I'm going to place down a lagoon platform um, in such a way that it looks really organic to the surrounding area, but it also provides me with a larger, more usable piece of terrain. Is it cheating? I, I mean a little, but like, it looks so much better, and it's not remotely game-breaking, so shut up, move out. We drop some structures on the platform, and we get our food supplies in place with some more super immersive fishing off the side of the mountaintop. After which, we make a supply run off to the hub once again, and it's there that I kind of decide that I want to figure out a way to implement golems for my dwarves. Uh, something that gives a real stone golem vibe, like uh, the golems in the Dragon Age series and their dwarven creators and all that stuff. So I recruit a skeleton and dub him Algo the Golem in typical fashion. Um, always need an Algo. Every game I've ever played, there's always an Algo. So, And uh, a human who I promptly send off to Squin to find the Surgeon so we can sew his feet to his knees like Cotton Hill and have another dwarf. Afterwards, we head back and I set up a couple new buildings, play with some new ideas, try to make the place more of a city that our enemies will be jealous of. Um, honestly, the kind of things are really starting to look solid here. You know, the aesthetic is fine. The base is really coming together. Uh, but in the dead of the night, we are attacked. Seemingly out of nowhere, we get assaulted by a couple starving bandits. All hands on deck as we fight our attackers, and we swiftly pummel them into the soil like the fertilizer that they are. And uh, later, we do the same thing to a group of Crimson Samurai, because I want to rip their armor off and sell it for more money so I can buy more shit from my dwarves. And when we're all said and done, I uh, send Giorgio and two of his nobles to sell the loot, and when we're headed back, I get the notification. The Black Dragon Ninja are coming back. No. No, we're not ready. No, no, no. We can't do this alone. So, I make one last-minute decision. We're going to need help to survive this. We need mercenary help. And that's where I'm calling. It's been fun, my guys. Subscribe to the Mad Lads Guild and become a Mad Lad yourself. I have been your hero in his head, and I'll catch you in the next one.